Greetings, today is Friday, August 8, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In today's video I will be talking about Invest 96, which is located in the tropical Atlantic, and continues with a medium probability of tropical cyclone development as it moves toward the subtropical Atlantic, and for the moment it remains on a track far from land areas. In the infrared satellite image we can see what used to be the tropical storm that has already transitioned to a subtropical system and is located far to the north in the Atlantic, without representing a threat to land areas. And then we will be talking about a strong tropical wave that will be coming out of Africa during this weekend, which could encounter marginally favorable conditions for tropical cyclone development during the next week. At least in the 2 a.m. tropical outlook, the National Hurricane Center maintains the development probability of Invest 96 at 60%. And notice that in the area where a tropical depression could develop in the central Atlantic, it is far from land areas. In fact, it remains well to the east of the island of Bermuda. While, on the other hand, the low-pressure system located to the east of North Carolina continues to decrease its potential for tropical cyclone development as it moves toward the northeast. And this is because conditions will not be very favorable for the formation of a tropical cyclone. And also note what will be happening between the United States and the island of Bermuda which is why it will remain over the open waters of the Atlantic. So regarding these two systems we are monitoring for the possibility of tropical cyclone development, we really should not be concerned. Now then, starting next week we have some strong tropical waves that will be coming out of Africa. In this infrared satellite image, we can see how the train of tropical waves remains very active, because the Madden-Julian oscillation is currently in a phase that favors instability and rising air over the African continent, and therefore strong tropical waves are expected to come out of the region over the next two weeks, so some of these tropical waves will have probabilities for development as they move through the tropical Atlantic. However, conditions in the tropical Atlantic are not entirely favorable. First, and as is normal for early August, the waters to the west of the Cape Verde Islands are still not warm enough to promote rapid tropical cyclone formation, and it really will not be until the tropical waves reach longitude 50 degrees west, where they will encounter sea surface temperatures above 26 degrees Celsius. And what I mean is that as these tropical waves come out of Africa, it will take a bit of time for them to achieve any kind of development, and it will probably not be until they cross longitude 45 degrees west, where we might see the opportunity for the development of a tropical depression. While on the other hand, the Madden-Julian oscillation also leaves us with favorable conditions in the upper levels of the atmosphere where we can see an anti-cyclone developing toward the end of next week just to the east and northeast of the Caribbean. And in case the next tropical wave manages to arrive strong in this area, it will find favorable conditions with good ventilation in the upper levels of the atmosphere, which can create very favorable conditions for strengthening if this tropical wave reaches the southwestern Atlantic. But the main impediment for tropical cyclone development continues to be dry and stable air that continues descending from mid-latitudes into the tropical Atlantic zone. So as this tropical wave moves west-northwest, it may encounter some difficulties with dry air that may interfere with or slightly limit its development. In addition, something we will be monitoring very closely early next week, is that the next tropical wave will be attached to the intertropical convergence zone, and this generates an area with high vorticity where it is typically difficult to know exactly where the low pressure center could be located. In fact, in some cases when we have such a broad circulation near Cape Verde, it is possible that several low-pressure systems may form that will be competing for tropical cyclone development. This really complicates the track scenario because if it consolidates farther north it could pass to the northeast of the Caribbean, while if it consolidates farther south it could have a track a little more toward the west. This is why we really cannot talk about what its future track will be, only about what the development possibilities are as it moves generally toward the west-northwest. That is precisely what the projections from the global model show us. For example, Let's look at the American model projection. We have the strong tropical wave to the west of the Cape Verde Islands during the morning hours of Tuesday. In this case, the American model consolidates the low pressure to the northeast of the broad circulation, and as it moves west we see gradual organization because it will be facing some challenges with the dry and stable air surrounding the circulation. However, notice that in about six to seven days the American model projects that a tropical depression or tropical storm could develop, but already at a fairly high latitude which could reduce the risk for the northeastern Caribbean. Now let's look at the European model projection. It also keeps the tropical wave quite weak for the next five days as it moves through the tropical Atlantic, although eventually in about six to seven days it achieves some organization and perhaps develops a tropical depression by the end of next week. The German model also has a very similar projection, with a fairly broad circulation, facing some problems with dry air, but perhaps projecting the development of a tropical depression in about five days between the Caribbean and the Cape Verde Islands. Meanwhile, 
The United Kingdom model also shows perhaps the development of a tropical depression as it moves west-northwest and eventually gaining latitude before approaching the Caribbean. And although we really cannot talk about tracks at the moment, I can tell you that there are some indications that possibly the circulation center could consolidate on the north side of the broad circulation, and this may help it gain a bit of latitude as it approaches the Caribbean, and with a bit of luck it could remain to the north and northeast of the region. In the long term we would have to see if this system reaches the waters of the southwestern Atlantic, where conditions will be extremely favorable for strengthening. But as I mentioned, this is a long-term forecast and we will have many days to watch. These are the ensemble member projections of the American model, and this is why I suspect that over the next two days the National Hurricane Center will mark this area with low development probabilities for the next seven days, even more so when the ensemble members of the European model also have consensus that in this area a low pressure or tropical depression could develop. And also note that the European model members consolidate the low pressure on the north side of the broad circulation and eventually gain latitude as it moves west-northwest. In addition, the members of Google's artificial intelligence model also see the possible development of a tropical depression in about five to seven days before eventually moving west-northwest with considerable uncertainty in its future track, but with some tendency to show a track gaining latitude. Well, that's all for the update on tropical conditions. I will continue to monitor the tropical outlooks from the National Hurricane Center and will keep you informed of any changes that occur in the projections. Before I go, I want to invite you to give this video a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe by clicking the red button and click the bell so you receive notifications when I record new videos. I hope everyone has an excellent day. See you later.